cat grooming tips you should know to keep your cutie pie clean, healthy, and pampered. From skin and fur care to ear and eye care, and from dental care to paw and nail care, a little maintenance goes a long way. Watch this video to find out how to keep your kitty clean, healthy, and pampered. Remember that a clean cat is a happy cat. Meow. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kitty. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing meowvelous today, if you were to ask me. If you are doing as meowvelous as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. Today, I want to talk to you about how to groom your cat. And I'm going to give you a few cat grooming tips that you can that will keep your cutie pie healthy, clean, and pampered. Note, there are some cats who don't tolerate being groomed. So if your cat fights the grooming process, and there are there is some potential that injury could occur to your cat or yourself please make an appointment with a professional groomer or a vet to have your cat groomed let's first talk about skin and fur care bathing your cat with a built-in with, with, with built-in grooming tools tongue and teeth especially your fastidious feline is already well equipped to tackle his or her own hair care needs but if she's very dirty or gets into something sticky or smelly, you may need to give her a bath. Now, follow those steps carefully to ensure minimal stress and maximum efficiency. So you want to schedule baths when your cat is at her most mellow. You can, you can have a play session with a cat dancer or other toy of choice can help tire out even the friskiest of felines. For your own protection, I recommend trimming Fluffy's claws before bathing. Give your cat a good brushing to remove any loose hair and mats. Gently place some cotton in her ears to keep the water out. Place a rubber bath mat in the sink or tub where you'll be bathing your kitty so she doesn't slip. And you want to fill with 3 to 4 inches, sometimes 5 inches of lukewarm, not hot, please, not hot, lukewarm water. Use a handheld spray hose to thoroughly wet your pet taking care not to spray directly in her ears, eyes, and nose. If you don't have a spray hose, a plastic pitcher or unbreakable cup works great. So you want to gently massage your pet with a solution of one part cat shampoo. Human shampoo can dry out her skin. So you want to go from one part cat shampoo to five parts water. So one to five, working from head to tail in the direction of hair growth. So take care to avoid the face, ears, and eyes. This is very important. You want to thoroughly rinse the shampoo off your cat with a spray hose or pitcher. Again, be sure the water is not hot. It has to be lukewarm. Take good care that all residue has been removed as it can irritate the skin and act as a magnet for dirt. Use a washcloth to carefully wipe your pet's face. Plain water is fine unless her face is very dirty in which case I would recommend using an extra diluted solution of shampoo now being very cautious around her ears again and eyes and then once you do that you want to gently gradually wrap your cat in a large towel and dry her with it in a warm place away from drafts so if your kitty doesn't mind the noise you can use a blow dryer for example on the lowest heat setting so if your pet has long hair, you may need to carefully untangle her fur with a wide toothed comb. After that, please always reward your cat with endless praise and her favorite treat for a successful bathing session. You want to have this sort of a positive reinforcement so that the next time you want to bathe her, she'll come, she'll come to you again. So that's for bathing your cat. Let's talk about brushing your cat. Brushing your cat is kind of important and vets across the country would recommend that because it remove brushing your cat not only removes dirt, grease and dead hair from his coat, but it helps to remove skin flakes and stimulates blood circulation, improving the overall condition of his skin. One or two brushings per week will help kitty to will help kitty to help um, to keep his healthy glow. Some people have been known to do it three times. And you'll find that regular sessions are especially beneficial when your cat ages and is no longer able to groom so meticulously on his own. So, before brushing though, 
check out the condition of your kitty's coat. If it's healthy, his hair will have a natural gloss and spring back under your hand when you touch it. There shouldn't be any bald patches or signs of fleas and ticks, and his skin should be free of wounds and unusual bumps. For short-haired cats with a metal comb, work the brush through your cat's fur from head to tail to remove all kinds of dirt and debris. You want to work along. You want to work along the lie of his fur, brushing in the direction the coat grows. Be meticulous here. Brush all over his body, including his chest and abdomen, and you want to focus on one section at a time to remove dead hair and tangles. You can use a rubber brush to remove dead hair on cats with short fur. For long-haired cats, those who live indoors, they shed throughout the year and need grooming sessions every few days to remove dead hair and prevent tangles. So you want to start with uh, his abdomen and legs, gently combing the fur upward toward his head. Comb the neck fur upward toward his chin. So make a part down the middle of his tail and gently brush out the fur on either side. Now you have to be very careful at, at all points to be very gentle with your cat. You can sprinkle talcum powder, for example, over knots and gently use your fingers to team them apart. So if the knots don't come out by hand, try using a mat splitter. Now during your weekly grooming sessions, you can run your hands along your cat's body. You can check for, for wounds, bumps and hidden tangles. Also check for tick, ticks and flea dirt, black specks of dried blood left behind by fleas. You can sneak a peek under his tail to check for feces attached to the fur that may need to be snipped away with scissors. It's also re re really critical to check around your cat's anus for tan, rice-sized objects. This could indicate the presence of tapeworm, and we all know how tapeworm is just devastating for cats. So neglecting to brush your kitty's coat can lead to painful tangles and a belly full of hair. And you'll know if your cat is suffering from hair balls when she coughs them up onto the floor or expels them in her feces. If despite regular brushing, your cat continues to suffer, continues to suffer from hair balls, there are several remedies available. All you have to do is just go to your vet and ask for a solution. All right, I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We're actually having a, a wonderful conversation today around cat grooming tips you should know to keep your cutie pie clean, healthy, and pampered. And uh, I've been talking to you about already talking to you about bathing your cat and brushing your cat. Let me quickly re remind you that. There are some cats who don't tolerate being groomed. So if your cat fights the grooming process and there is some potential that injury could, could happen to your cat or yourself, please make an appointment with a professional groomer or a vet to have your cat groomed. Now let's talk about how to handle skin problems. The condition of your cat's skin is a harbinger of his overall health. So when a skin problem happens, usually your cat may respond to may respond to it with excessive scratching, chewing, and or licking. So a wide variety of causes ranging from external parasites and allergies to seasonal changes and stress or a combination of this may be affecting your cat's skin and should be investigated. Now, vets ac across the country have warned cat owners in the, in the past 10 years because skin problems are one of the most common reasons pet parents seek vet care. Let's talk about symptoms of skin problems in cats. You have constant scratching, right, licking and chewing at the skin, especially around the neck and head. You have scabs, redness or inflammation, round, scaly, scaly patches on the face and paws, dry, flaky or otherwise irritated skin, hair loss, bald patches, you have hair balls, rashes, swellings, sometimes skin discoloration, lumps, drainage of blood or pus so one, one of the following may be causing an uh, abnormality with your cat skin and should be investigated so you have ringworm fleas we had a whole show dedicated to uh, covered in fleas you might want to double check that we have other external parasites such as ear mites those usually 
cause itching and redness around the ears and a dark coffee ground like material can be seen in the ear canals you have seasonal seasonal allergies food allergies many foods such as corn poultry milk or beef fillers and colorings can be seen as foreign by your cat's immune system and can lead to itching and rashes grooming products certain shampoos and grooming products can can irritate your cat's skin seasonal changes right environmental factors you have chemicals we live in a world where you have chemicals everywhere you have fabrics all of these things can cause skin irritation as can exposure to the sun or excessive cold bacterial or yeast infections tumors and stress so anytime you have anytime you suspect any of those causes or any, uh, any of these conditions you want to talk to your vet asap right so the the vet will uh, look at the whole area of conditions that your cat that your cat might have such as excessive hair loss flaking and scaling redness and bald patches and, and uh, if your pet begins to excessively scratch lick and or bite areas on his fur the vet will prescribe certain solutions to you so after obtaining a history and performing a thorough physical examination of your cat your vet may perform some of the following diagnostic tests in order to find the cause of your cat's symptoms so skin scraping with findings ev evaluated under a microscope to check for mites they have something called tape test this is for checking for parasites individual hair examination under a microscope you have bacterial culture and sensitivity test skin biopsy food and other allergy testing blood test to, to evaluate your cat's overall health microscopic evaluation of cells to establish if bacteria or yeast are present right now are certain cats more prone to skin problems than others yes so because of the wide ranges of cases cats of all ages and breeds are susceptible to issues involving skin so young elderly immuno what experts call immunocompromised and cats living in overcrowded stressful environment may be more susceptible to skin problems than other than others how do you prevent skin problems because here we're talking about cat grooming tips but you have to be able to look at the skin also and how to make sure that the skin your, your cat skin is as healthy as possible how do you prevent skin problems use natural hypoallergenic soaps and shampoos that are recommended for use on cats brush your cat regularly to prevent matting of hair feed your cat a healthy balanced food without fillers or artificial ingredients implement a flea treatment program recommended by your vet you want to thoroughly clean and vacuum your home and remember to always throw away the bag provide calm living conditions for your cat and your vet may also prescribe skin creams and, and or oral medications to prevent skin problems how do you treat skin problems because what i just told you was for prevention how do you treat the, the skin problems for this you really want to talk to your vet this is one area where he or she will know exactly based on the the pet's history and breed what kind of a uh, skin solutions are more are suitable for him or her so you can ask your vet about the following treatments topical products including shampoos dips and sprays to prevent and treat parasites a balanced diet to help maintain healthy skin and coat antibiotic and antifungal medications a dietary supplement containing essential fatty acids fatty acids are very important you also want to talk about hypoallergenic diet for food allergies All right i'll be right back right after this don't go anywhere <laughs> welcome back folks to another edition of sweetie kiwi how are you doing today i hope you are still having a great time with us here we are talking about cat grooming tips and uh, those are tips you should know to keep your cutie pie clean healthy and pampered if you love this kind of content and you would like to hear more about us, please consider subscribing to our channel and turn on the notification bell. We'll surely, pre surely appreciate that. We release shows, various shows every single day, rain or shine, 
and if you have questions please leave them in the comment section we certainly review all questions and will answer you and also like this content and share i want to talk now about shedding shedding is just a cat's natural process of losing dead hair so indoor cats can shed all year long so regularly grooming your cat and vacuuming hair from your house should minimize the inconvenience of shedding however if you see bald patches in your cat's fur or notice a significant loss of hair the underlying cause may be a health related problem and should be investigated by a vet so you have various dietary medical and stress related issues that could cause your cat to lose more hair than than is normal so as soon as you notice that she's losing an excessive amount of hair you want to talk to your vet right away because your cat may be suffering from allergies ringworm bacterial infection fleas as well as poor a poor diet stress certain medications may also cause side effects that lead to bald patches pregnancy or lactation or sunburn now you you can also have something called hyperthyroidism that's hormonal imbalance so if your cat obsessively licks bites or scratches or if he is losing patches of hair it's important to take him right away now if your cat sheds a lot try to start feeding him a healthy balanced diet you want to groom him regularly you want to examine your cat's skin and coat during your grooming session right and checks you want to check particularly for ticks parasites fleas cuts bumps also redness hair hair loss Let's talk about ear care. Ear is very important for cats as it is for um, dogs also. Your cat's ears may be able to pick up the sound of a bag of treats being opened across the house, but they could still use a little help staying clean. So monitoring your kitty's ear once per week for wax, debris and infections will help those sensitive sonar de detectors stay alert to your every move. So let's talk about outer ear check. So a healthy cat ear flap or pinna has a layer of hair on its outer surface with no bald spots. And its inner surface is clean and light pink. So if you see any change, if you see any, any discharge, redness or swelling, your cat's ear should be checked by a vet. So you have inner ear exam. So you bring kitty into a quiet room where there are no other pets. So you wanna gently fold back each ear and what you do is you look down into the canal and the healthy inner ears will be pale pink in color, carry no debris or odor and will have minimal if no ear wax. So if you find that your cat's ear are kicked with wax or you detect a smell, bring your, your cat ASAP to the vet. Let's kind of quickly talk about ear cleaning. How do you do it? How do you actually do it? Let me just give you the basics here. Ear Cleaning 101. Place a little bit of liquid ear cleaner, ask your vet for a recommendation, onto a clean cotton ball or piece of gaze. Fold your cat's ear back gently and wipe away any debris or ear wax that you can see on the underside of her ear. Lift away the dirt and wax rather than rubbing it into the ear. And do not attempt, please do not attempt to clean the canal. Probe it inside of your cat's ear can cause trauma or infection now what are signs of ear problems here are a few signs you, you want to watch for that may indicate that your cat's ears should be checked by a vet you have persistent scratching and pawing of the ear area sensitivity to touch head tilting or shaking loss of balance and and disorientation redness or swelling of the ear flap or canal unpleasant smell black or yellowish discharge if you see also an accumulation of dark brown wax you have a hearing you have hearing loss or bleeding those you should asap send your your your, your, your cutie pie to the vet you have to know a few ear disorders ear mites are common parasites that are highly contagious among pets Telltale signs include excessive itching of the ears and debris that resembles coffee grounds. Ear infections are usually caused by bacteria, yeast, or 
foreign debris caught in the ear canal. Treatment should be sought immediately as ear infections can cause considerable discomfort and may indicate allergies, hormonal abnormalities, or hereditary disease. You also have blood blisters, hematoma. They are the result of blood accumulation in the ear flap, so they are often caused by infection, ear mites, fleas, or trapped debris that cause your cat to scratch her ears or shake her head excessively. I'll be right back, right after this. Good morning, bro. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. I hope you are still with us here. We are having a conversation around cat grooming tip and uh, cat grooming tips. Here are the tips you should know to keep your cutie pie clean, healthy, and pampered. And uh, we've talked about ear care, talked about shedding, skin care. Let's now talk about paw and nail care. Now, healthy paws. Cats need healthy feet to scratch, climb, and achieve their famed acrobatic landings, right? That's why it's really important to regularly examine and clean your cat's paws and make sure they're wound free. So your cat's feet should always be kept clean. So aside from causing pain, unhealthy substances that stick to his feet may end up on his tongue during grooming. So on each day, give your cat's paws a gentle wipe with a, a damp cloth, checking between his toes and around the paw pads keeping your floors and other surfaces free of debris and household chemicals will go a long way to help keep your cat's feet clean. If you notice your cat obsessively cleaning her paws, limping or favoring one leg, you want to investigate because she might require vet attention. What about nail care? Does your cat disappear when the clippers come out? Do you have to wrap her in a towel to give her a manicure? Those things, again, you are you, you have to follow a few tips when it comes to nail care. Choose a chair in a quiet room where you can comfortably sit your cat on your lap. You want to get her when she's relaxed and even sleepy, such as in a groggy after meal state. Actually, I, my cousin my cousin does that after the cat eats. So she's in a lethargic state and, uh, she, you know, she just go ahead and, and uh, cuts her nail. So take care of that. The cat isn't, isn't able to spy any birds, wild animals, or action outside nearby windows and make sure no other pets are around. So you want to gently take one of your cat's paws b between your fingers and massage for no longer than three seconds. So if your cat pulls her paw away, don't squeeze or pinch. Just follow her gesture. Keep it in gentle contact. All right. So and then the pink part of the cat's nail called a quick is where the nerves and blood vessels are. Do not cut the sensitive area. Snip only the white part of the claw. It's better to be cautious and cut less of the nail rather than risk cutting this area. If you do accidentally cut the quick, any bleeding can be stopped with a stop tick powder or a stick. It's a great idea to keep, to keep it nearby while you trim. With your cat in your lap facing away from you, take one of her toes in your hand. Massage and press the pad until the nail extends. Now, slowly and gradually, trim only the sharp tip of one nail. Release in your cat's toe and quickly give, give her a treat. If your cat didn't notice, clip another tail. But don't, tri don't trim no more than two claws in one sitting until your cat is comfortable. Then you want to reward her with a special treat. A nail trimming every 10 days to 2 weeks is recommended, So, but if your kitty refuses to let you clip his claws, ask your vet or a groomer for help. If your cat resists, don't raise your voice or punish him. Never attempt a clipping when your cat is agitated or you yourself are upset. And don't rush, you may cut into the quick. So don't try to trim all of your cat's claws at one time, and do not declaw your cat. This surgery involves amputing the end of a cat's toes and is highly discouraged by many, many, many uh, pet organizations in, in the United States. Instead, what you want to do is trim regularly, providing your cat with the appropriate scratching post and asking your vet about soft plastic covers for your cat's claws. Let's talk about dental care. Dental care is also very important and you want to watch out for 
any of the following signs that, that could indicate problems in your cat's mouth. Dark red line along the gums, red and swollen gums, ulcers on gums or, or tongues, loose teeth, pus, difficulty chewing food, excessive drooling, and excessive pawing at the mouth area. So one thing that's very important is that you can brush your cat's teeth at home by following the simple steps. First, get your cat used to the idea of having her teeth brushed. You want to start by gen gently, meticulously massage, massaging her gums with your fingers or touching a cotton swab to them. After a few sessions, put a little bit of a cat formulated toothpaste on her lips to get her used to the taste. Introduce a toothbrush designed especially for cats. It will be smaller than human toothbrushes and have softer bristles. Toothbrushes that you can wear over your finger are also available and allow you to give a nice massage to your cat's gum. Apply the toothpaste to her feet, her teeth for a gentle brushing. Remember that chew toys can satisfy your cat's natural, natural desire to chomp while making her teeth strong. Gnawing on a chew toy can also, be, can also help floss your cat's teeth, massage her gums, and scrape away soft tartar. If, you're, if your cat ever suffers from any of the symptoms that I'm going to give you, please see the vet right away. Gingivitis, periodontitis, stomatitis, rodent ulcer, salivary cyst, and mouth ulcers. Let's talk about eye care. You can tell if, you're, if there's something wrong with your cat's eyes by looking for the, follow, for the following thing. Discharge, watering, red or white eyelid linings, crusty gunk in the corners of the eye, tear stained, tear stained fur, closed eyes, cloudiness or change in eye color, visible third eyelid, and certain body language will also alert you to possible eye, eye distress. So if your cat is constantly, constantly squinting or pawing in her at her eye area, give her eyes a good inspection, and if you if you find any of the uh, above symptoms call your vet ASAP because this could be a sign of uh, disorders as varied as cataracts, glaucoma, retinal disease, keratitis, third eyelid protru protrusion, conjunctivates. So all, all those are conditions that your cat might have. So the bottom line here is that when it comes, when it comes to eye care, you want to look for some uh, red flags and at, at the very first sign you, you feel something is not right, reach out to the vet. Okay? Thank you so much for listening to this conversation. Quickly recap today's show. Cat grooming tips you should know to keep your cutie pie clean, healthy, and pampered. So I talk about skin and, f and fur care. So bathing, brushing, handling skin problems, and shedding. Ear care, paw and nail care, dental care, and eye care. Thank you so much for listening to the, to the conversation. Really appreciate it. I will see you next time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous. <laughs>